Data of every description will pervade our consciousness. Holograms projected beneath our eyelids. Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi and welcome back at the museum. Today we're visiting beautiful Lissebroek in the Netherlands. We're visiting Ben van Halle who tipped us that he was able to replace the pinch rollers on portables. He has a whole collection. So he's sort of a specialist in his field and today he's going to show us how he's actually able to replace the pinch rollers on any Philips or Panasonic portable DCC player. Rolf, this is a marvelous player. The DCC-175. It really deserves good quality pinch rollers. Um, the way we change those pinch rollers is as following. We start removing all the necessary parts. At first we start with the bottom. We undo all the screws in the bottom. For those tiny screws, it's good to have a magnetic screwdriver. It prevents you from looking under the table to try to find the screws when you drop them. Then we remove the back plate. Normally, it's not necessary to unscrew all the screws because sometimes they you can they fix it in the in, in this in this plate, but not with this one. So. The next thing you do is loose those clips from the flat cables and this one. Be careful, they are very brittle. Here is some glue that you can loose the glue. Then you open the lid, the top plate, because there are also screws in here. I think there's no, no battery in it. DCC Museum has good spare batteries for you if you need them. Now you are able to remove the end of this cover, this boxing plate with your nails and when you have done that you leave it this way and then you can unscrew the PCB and always use the copper colored one to replace it here. Keep that in mind when you are assembling 
old parts. You have to unclip this connector just with your nails between uh, the back side of this connector. And now you can take this PCB out. Always be careful with this flat cable. Now you can take away this this part. Oh, it's broken. It's no problem. I can show you how you can repair it. Lay it down this way. Then take some precautions to protect this switch. So. Is this a, a band custom? Yes, it is. It's a piece of paper with a piece of tape. Now we can remove the top plate with the LCD screen. What you have to do is with a small screwdriver to place it underneath this hinge and then it's possible to remove the lid. So this is the base from the DCC player. The next thing you do is take a piece of tape, because you need it, to take this spring-loaded arm to fix it. Because you have to be to remove the screw from the hinge, it, it, had, it must be possible for you to reach that because we undo those screws from the hinge to remove the head block SE. So explain to me again why why this piece of tape is, is here? Otherwise if you don't place it here mm -hmm. it's 
nearly impossible to get to go with your screwdriver to that screw. Okay. That's the that's why you. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's why you block it. Mm -hmm. It makes the work somewhat easier. Um, the next thing you do, you unclip those flat cables from the head block, I see. Be careful, because once you've broken this flat cable, then it's, the game is over. Then you have to try to find a new head block, I see. And that can cost you a lot of time and a lot of money. So what you do now is you protect this flat cable with a piece of hard plastic, hard plastic sheets. And you place the flat cable between those sheets. And there's another piece of tape to fix it. And then you have the possibility with a block of wood to place it over the edge. And now you can simple unscrew both hinges. The construction is spring loaded, so it immediately comes from the base plate and that's it. This is left, this is right. These are the pinch rollers. You can uh, remove the pinch rollers with a paper clip. It's special, it's some special tooling, but you can make it yourself. This is it. And now you can remove the pinch rollers. Because it the paper clip has the same diameter as the uh, Sometimes you need a little help with a tiny screwdriver. But not too much power on it, not too much effort, because you can easily break this uh, the, the, the pinch roll block. There is a slight difference between the underside and the top side. The top side is completely round and on the bottom side there is a flat, a flat place, a flat side on the axle. And now the other one, also be careful with this uh, flat cable.
put some pressure on it. So you're removing both shafts so that pinch roller can come free. That's right. Those are the new, not original spares, pins rollers. The axles are not the same. These are the original ones, and we have to remove those axles as well as those from the new, not original ones. The rollers themselves are exactly the same, but only the axles are not the same. The boiled water. You cannot use it afterwards for it for your tea because it's completely spoiled. But for this for this occasion, it's it works very well. This is the new one. You just soften the rubber. You make it more flexible when you eat it. Sometimes you need screwdriver. To make it possible to remove the axle. This is a paper clip. No, it's more humor to call it special tooling with a simple paper clip. <laughs> when you assemble this pinch roller, you have to look forward to see that this is above and this is the underside. The new pinch rollers, the old axles. Mm -hmm. You take some water, put it on the axle, then, it, then you can slip it easy into the roller, normally. And luckily also now, then it's uh, fixed for the next 20 years. This is the top side. And now you can place the axles. Little pressure. Until you see the other side of the axle. And now it's fixed. What you do now is to take both hinges. You have to look at the hinge has to go in this little hole on the right side and 
this little hole on the left side. And what you do now is screw it into it approximately one turn. So it's a bit fixed, one turn. And you do it the same with this side also. One turn. So it's very loose. And what you do now, you start at first with the right one. You put it in the eye. Be careful for this flat cable, but you already have protected it with the hard plastic sheet. And now you put it in here. You can feel it. And then, it's not so difficult, but you have to look at this spring-loaded pen and then the second one over there has to go into the back of this head block I see and then you have this third one pin and now you must put this inch And this can be tricky. So, now you can see where, where, why it is necessary to place a cover on this switch, because you can easily damage it when you're working with this tricky part of fixing the head. SE. And that's why you need this block on the back side, you can see, when you are busy with it, it's, uh, it's impossible to crack it. And it's fixed now. Just check the screws. And now it's a piece of cake. Now you can uh, remove your tape, the protection sheets. Now we can assemble this part, the lid, top plate with the LCD screen, two eyes from the hinges, this one and this one, you click it to this point to look at this part and this pin has to slide under this place, click it in, and there it is. There is a difference between this screw, this one is the head, is somewhat bigger.
2000. We uh, positioned the housing, but I promised that I would tell how to repair this broken lid, this broken part from uh, the housing. And I do it with methyl, ethyl ketonate, it is Dutch, also, also you know it as mech. It is not necessary for the player, but when you repair such a thing, do it with quality, and that's what we're doing now. You need some fluid, not so much. You put it in a pot for nail polish. It's a MEK. Put some fluid on it, on both sides. It softens the plastic. And this is normal for this age of housings. That the plastic becomes some brittle, but you can repair it very easy this way. And you cannot uh, repair a lot of plastics on this player with MEK. It dries quickly, so you repair it this way. Leave it for a couple of minutes and then it's fixed and it hardens within 24 hours completely. But if you have it on your fingers, be careful. When you touch it with some mech on your fingers, when you touch the housing, then it also uh, softens and that's not what you want. Now we can place this flat cable. And we can reposition the PCB. What you have to do loosen this this side of the housing then take a good look at the switches they are on the right place And now you can put just a little pressure into this side. Put in the flat cable. It's always good to check if they are repositioned in the right way because you can easily break the switches. Flat cables always has to slide very easy in the housings, in the connection.
and also two other screws from the housing. The lid from the, of the battery cover, and now it's finished. But we also have to check if it's working. That's why we have all done this. This is a battery you can obtain from a DCC museum. It's a very nice one. Eight hours duration. It works. It even gives some music. It's that's it. Very cool. What made you? investigate pinch motor support was. Let me say to you that at first I'm a perfectionist. Everything has to look good, but also the player must play good. And at a certain moment I found out that uh, the, the tapes were not good enough. The, 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 the quality of, of the sounds was not good enough. And at first I thought it was the tape itself, so I tried several things to uh, make the tapes somewhat better. But at the end, the main reason were the uh, uh, pinch rollers. Um, and mainly the A part of the pinch rollers. It's so side A, you mean? If you know, if you, if you know uh, the construction of the transport mechanism, then you can see why uh, it's more critical at the A side than at the B side. The B side always works. So if you have one, only one pinch roller, um, uh, change the pinch roller from the A side. Um, but knowing what the problem was um, leads me to an, uh, someone who I know in Gaandre in, in the Netherlands and I phoned him and I said, Alex, um, I need some pinch rollers. And he said, why? My pinch rollers are not good enough. They are not, not, not uh, completely round and um, they are hardened. And then he said something to me, um, well, it's a pity for you. Then uh, put it aside, the, the player, because there are no pinch rollers anymore. Um, for portables. For portables, yeah, yeah. For, for, for those portables. And then I said, well, I don't think that such a perfect product, such a complex product, you have to stop with, with using it only for those pinch rollers. Then I start seeking pinch rollers and I already um, <clears throat> ordered some pinch rollers um, at, at, at a certain uh, company um, and then I was looking at their website and then they had also pinch rollers for portable players, portable cassette players, uh, compact cassette players. And I was thinking, well, maybe they will have the same the, the, the same um, um, diameter, uh, di uh, diameter. Mm -hmm. and um, then I ordered a few ones and I tried out how to, uh, to, fit, to, to get them into the, to the, to the portable player. And I found out that it, uh, it was a perfect solution. Just take out the, the, the axles, the nylon axles inside it, and uh, put the old axles from uh, from the pinch roller in, into it, and you have a perfect uh, a, a DCC player again. And that was also my main goal. 
to have not only at the outside a good player but also on the inside. Technical, perfect product. And that's uh, how I found out. So the, um, the, the, the difference, um, we talked a little bit before this, is that uh, every pinch roller in a standard player would cause dropouts. Um, a, def a defect or a, a worn pinch roller in a portable in your investigation did not cause dropouts, but it caused track information to be lost. It's right. time or track information from the artist. Yeah. And after you replaced the pinch rollers, because you, you got quite a few, uh, two, four, six, seven, seven uh, portables, the ones that had this problem, the problem disappeared after you replaced the pinch roller. You're right. So, um, you, no loss of uh, data like um, track number and like uh, time. Um, because the, the, the sound, the track, never had a problem. It was only the, the data track. Mm -hmm. And the solution was to uh, put another pinch roll in it. One remark, if you have an old um, uh, the TCC, you already recorded it. You recorded this with the, 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 the bad pinch roller, then you have bad information and you do not, the, uh, you do not solve that problem because you already lost data when you are recording it. So you have no track information uh, or sometimes uh, um, um, flickering track information and flickering time. So the, um, the way to go about that is that when you're testing, test with either a pre-recorded tape that you know the track information was done in the studio or make a new recording on that player and play it back and if then the track information is yeah. complete then you have the accurate data rather than using a old tape that might have had been recorded on a, on a faulty pinch roller. What in, what in may, what? may I ask you something? Yeah, sure. I never had a problem with pre-recorded tapes. Do you know what the reason is for that? Well, um, uh, yes, the, one of the, the, the things that is very wary is that if you record a tape on this player and you play it back on all others, you might see that the tape recorded on this player will play perfectly on six of them and one of them might have missing track information. It could be head alignment, it could be the pinch rollers, there could be variable things. That wasn't a problem back in the day because very few people had multiple DCC players. And now you have you know, people who have portables or uh, like yourself, portable, uh, stationary, Marantz and one in the car. But that has everything to do is with, uh, with how it was recorded on the original tape. The pre-recorded ones are always recorded to industry standards. So everything is recorded perfectly the way it's supposed to fit on a track, including the uh, the, uh, the information, uh, artist information, track information. So that's why um, if you have a problem with a pre-recorded tape, there is a bigger issue. Right. Then there is a bigger issue. So the tape is not the same? The tape the, is not the same. It, de it depends on who, who recorded it, with what The recorder. way you record it is also not the same. No, it used to be the same. But of course, after 30 years, uh, head alignment, you know, pinch roller alignment, yeah. everything, everything is a little bit different. And it might be, you know, a, a tenth of a millimeter off and, and you yeah. would never notice. Yeah. So um, we uh, occasionally, since we're using the 175 uh, to make our pre-recorded tapes, like, like one in a hundred customers would, would complain. It's like, hey, I have a Marantz, it's playing perfectly, but it doesn't play perfectly in the car. It's very hard to explain then that, that uh, it's a combination of tape and, and player. 30 years ago, everything was perfectly aligned. Of course, after 30 years, um, it's, um, it's not. Because the situation with these pinch rollers are different than on any other player. On any other player, you name it, what, what stationary deck we replace the pinch rollers is because there is already a situation. It has dropouts, it doesn't record well. With these, um, it just has this slight problem that doesn't prevent it from recording or playback. But in my opinion, in a couple of years, we will have big problems with these pinch rollers, meaning that not only time information or track information is lost, but you might also Same. have stuttering or recording yeah. issues. Yeah. So it's, 
it's very cool to have a solution before a real major problem exists because this is not a repair in my opinion that anyone can do and it's also if you uh, need to hire somebody to do this it might also be an expensive repair it is so i, I understand that people want to wait but that doesn't matter the fact that you already know that there is a solution and this video will help yep. okay so we now have a solution we found the pinch rollers we will put these in the, uh, in, in, the in the store naturally of the dcc museum we will we will get some stock and then uh, it's up to the handy user either to do it themselves or, or send it in for, for repair because these players could really last another 20 years if, if you do the, the pinch rollers. Well, thanks again for, for, for hosting us. It was an awesome visit and um, we look forward to working with you. You know, people want advice, then yes. they can surely ask him. Correct. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, uh, thanks again for showing us this repair and thanks for watching. See was, you next time. It was a pleasure for me.